And then once the language was established for each region, I simply uh, thought of what the character was like, thought of a word in that language, and then adapted a name to fit the character and what the character is like. Do you have a favorite character in the book that is special to you? Well, authors really aren't allowed to have favorites. But there are some scenes that I like to write uh, with one particular character. And uh, that, that character is called uh, Timios, also goes by the name of Timion. He's just kind of a man's man. And he's just fun to write. And so in that regard, I think he's the funnest, the, the most fun to write. Hi, my question's for Mr. Budnick. I actually have two questions. Um, first of all, I want to talk based on the outfit. Where'd you get the Halloween shirt, and why did you choose Halloween shirt for this segment? Well, uh, I follow them, dear friends of mine. Um, when I wrote the book, they were, uh, well, I, I was friends with, with them from uh, Scanlon Music. And when I wrote the book, I submitted it to them. You know, uh, they were basically why I got back into writing because I'd quit for like 12 years. Wow. Um, so I got back into it for, you know, you know, we were talking. I showed them one of my demos. Uh, Always Goodbye was uh, demoed by the band that I was playing with in, in Europe or Wales in particular, called Bastille. Um, they got to hear it, they liked it, and you know, they kind of like said, well, you know, you should write some more stuff. You know, well, maybe. So I did that, and uh, I showed it to them. You know, they kind of liked it, you know. Uh, they suggested that, you know, they would just done, or releasing, a, CD called Victims of the Night that they had recorded in 1986. So they weren't in the market per se for material right then and then and I'd given them basically a two month period of, hey, you know, I can hang on. Um, I was really out of sorts with things. I didn't think I was gonna go on for any more than two months. That's where my head was at then. So this was kind of like a, this is where I'm at, this is why um, if I'm not home tomorrow, this is why. Uh, so I said, you know, I said, you know, they were friends. I wanted my friends to understand me, you know. They suggested that uh, I submit it to some other bands, so I liked No Doubt. They were real popular. Uh, she had some real, real strong material, so I submitted to them. They liked it. Uh, I never heard from them directly. I heard from their their IR manager. And uh, from what I understand, and I never heard this directly, but a song called Dark Blue was in response to those poems that, uh, that Gwen got to read. And then Halloween lost touch with me because I moved. And, uh, you know, basically, their friends, I support them. The pants, my mom makes them. Uh, I play guitar a lot, and it's simpler just to keep wearing this stuff uh, so you don't have to get in the jeans and scratch up your guitars because they cost a, a real fortune. And uh, yeah, this is how people know me, so this is how I run around. Okay, and another question is, and I know you came from a long way, I know you came from St. Helen, and Monroe is, is a drive from there, but when you look through these books, are they, are they soothing to you? Do they, do they help you, in a way, kind of cope with the situations and, and all the hurt and bad that you've been through? Is it kind of like when you write, when you write your poems, is it a release of a little bit of that anger? Well... Yes and no. Um, some of the stuff there is no real relief. Some of it is, all right, I'm putting this on paper and 
nothing could change that stuff in the past. I mean, you know, that, that's been there, done that. That's how it is. What I hope is gained from all this stuff is that someone that picks that up and reads it and maybe deals with uh, survivors or the mentally ill or someone that just doesn't seem like they fit in because, you know, they don't fit in socially. They're awkward. You know, you would call them maybe a geek. Well, you know, hey, you know, uh, welcome them in a little bit. And uh, those that are going through this stuff, uh, some of it is, well, you know, keep on going, don't give up. Uh, I hope people understand that or gain an understanding from this stuff. Um, you know, I don't want this to be a pity party for Mikey. I mean, that wasn't why it was written. But I want people to deal with those that are going on with this stuff now and be of help to them and deal with the things that they cannot deal with me. I'll never be married. I'll never have a relationship with people because I went through some real um, severe stuff. I mean, it gets in the books. Uh, I got chased through the woods and shot at by my uncle before I was abused. Um, basically, I was told, well, you know, you say anything, one, nobody will believe you, and two, if you say anything, I'll kill them. You know, he's a decorated war hero. Uh, he's quite capable of it, I thought. I mean, hell, he could shoot at me, pardon my French, but I didn't see him having any trouble with that. Um, so I buried it. You know, um, I became two people in a sense. There's a part that was fighting to stay alive and there's a the part that came home and had to pretend that everything was cool. You know, I had trouble with school. Um, school was really boring to me, but it was just, you're on, you know, this edge. You know, you're just so stressed out by, you know, you don't want to be touched by anybody. You don't want to be around anybody because you're afraid that if anybody gets too close, you're going to kill them. You know, you're so, you know, you know, that's where, you know, it's kill or be killed and that's where I'm at and you know um, maybe they can learn how to deal with that in a way that I get or those like me get down where we can be married someday and have the kids and the life that everybody wants Wow, you have to get all of us. <laughs> very deep, very deep. Um, any more questions? I have one for Walter again. Yes, ma'am. You said that um, there's a forest in Bajoa. It's under the water. How can that happen if it's supposed to grow and trees, trees grow? So how is that going to work? Just kind of curious underwater. <clears throat> well, Bajoa itself has a, uh, a lighting system that is similar to the sun. It actually uh, has a, uh, a, a giant lamp up there that uh, simulates the sunshine and simulates the days that are on the mainland. And so this uh, lamp uh, is, uh, provides the energy they need in order to do phot photosynthesis and things like that. And in turn, the plants and the people uh, provide oxygen, the plants do, and the people provide the carbon dioxide for the uh, plants. And so it's just like a, a little biosphere uh, in that dome uh, so that uh, the plants are actually an integral part of the dome because without the plants, they would need, they would exhaust their CO2 scrubbers, things like that. 
So uh, it, it actually is because of a symbiotic need uh, that the trees were planted, much like they are in the, our world today. Uh, the trees are so important that they have a lot of people that talk about trees being important, and they are important because they are major oxygen producers, and uh, they uh, uh, help the environment, uh, and helps clean the environment and scrub the environment. So that's the same sort of idea in the dome. Uh, I have a question for Mr. Um, in your uh, poetry, uh, you uh, express your feelings very deeply, and uh, I have a kind of, it's kind of a personal question. I, I just uh, wonder if you think that there's any hope for you in your situation that anything good could come from your life exactly. Well, there's always hope that, I mean, I think, yeah, all right, you know, the cards kind of kind of suck, but, you know, um, they are what they are. Will things get, you know, magically better? Well, I don't know, you know, maybe it's realistic to just hold on to the idea that, well, tomorrow is another day. We'll get through tomorrow, see how tomorrow is. You know, that's about as all, you know, we don't, we don't have no guarantees. We've got right now. Um, I don't know how to fix where I'm at, and they don't real, really seem to know how to fix it. They throw these techniques, um, EPT, you know, things like that. Um, you know, one technique they threw at me was visualization technique. You know, see yourself asking somebody out for a date. See yourself going on a date. Well, if you've never been in a relationship where things were positive, what are you going to see? You see yourself being what you experience. That's why I pull away, and that's why I have high walls. So in one regard, no. But for somebody else, maybe they will. Wow. wow, that was awesome. That was truly awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm pleasure. Glad to have you on the show. Definitely glad to have you on the show as well. Everybody, let's, let's give it to them, please. Please, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, everybody, that's it for tonight. Don't forget, on June 18th, uh, uh, we have um, uh, uh, Michael... A. Butnick will be at a book event uh, June 18th from 11 to 1 p.m. at the Book Nook in Moreau, historical Moreau, Michigan. Okay.